Hey guys, I'm gonna show you guys how we build our torsion shock, um, shocks for the front of these straight axle cars today. Um, we're using the D-Rod because I have the motor tore out of it, and right now is a perfect time to show you guys how this works and how simple it is. Um, there is a video in the link above that you can click on, on the tear out of the motor, and um, then there will be another one on the actual putting the motor back in and completing it. But right now, I'm just gonna go over these torsion shocks in the front end. Um, there's a lot of different styles that I've done over the years. Um, this style right here, I put in this car 11 years ago, 12 years ago. Um, and I've never changed them. I've never taken them out. I haven't changed the bushings. They've been the same forever. The way that this works is that there is a plate here. Um, there's a friction uh, material in here. Then you got your plate, another piece of friction material, and then the mounting bracket that goes actually welded to the front of the car. And what happens is you have travel in the front end of the car when you're going down the road. It's traveling like this. And you know, a lot of times without the torsion shock in the front end, you're gonna get a lot of hop in the front end if you don't have something that's gonna shock it. Um, this is kind of an old school setup. There's a lot of different kinds of torsion shocks that you can get. Um, for like a trailer, um, you know, uh, the late model cars even have a torsion shock set up now. This is kind of old school, it works really well. Um, but what happens is, basically what you can do is apply pressure to this bolt right here. And as you tighten this, it puts pressure on your friction points in here. This material in here will compress a little bit and add more pressure to the arm here, which will keep it from bouncing so hard. Um, and it shock loads it. So the more you pressure you put on it, the more shock load you get out here. It's, it, it strengthens it up and it keeps it from hopping down the road. Um, but today I've got a set of uh, lady legs that I've cut out on the plasma cutter. And I wanna show you guys how we put it together. And um, it's kind of my own style. There's a little bit of work involved, but I wanna show you how we do them. So if there's anybody out there that wants to use this lady leg idea, it's pretty cool. It looks cool on the front of these old straight axle cars. So let's get over there and check it out. So these are our lady legs that we cut out on the plasma cutter. Um, this is the beginning of it. What I like to do is, I mean, we could just put them on like this if we wanted to, but I like to give them some detail. And um, I'm gonna show you guys kind of how I like to do it and um, put like the, uh, the stockings on her legs, cut out a detail for her shoe. It just makes the legs look a lot sexier when you put them on the front of the car. Right now I need to take it over to the belt sander, clean it up a little bit, get all the little bit of slag that's left on it off, and then um, we'll get to going on it. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually gonna draw the nets for the, uh, this is just the netting for the stockings. Or, I don't know what you call them, pantyhose or whatever they are, but this is the garter here. And then what I'm doing right now is I'm taking this piece of three quarter inch flat bar, using it as a spacer to basically lay out my lines for the cross. You know, like if you look at the old um, nylons or whatever you called them back in the old days, they were like the netty ones. And, and you know, a lot of, a lot of girls and women still wear them today. Like, especially to like pin up stuff and Halloween. And, you know, I think even going out now, you know, here in Vegas, you see them all the time. So um, anyway, these are, these are really cool. I'm gonna lay these out and, um, and show you guys how we cut them in.
Okay, so this right here is our uh, lady legs that are been cut out with the plasma cutter and then spend a little time with the cutoff wheel to kind of give them some detail. Now what I need to do is punch the holes in the ends right here where you're gonna attach this to the, to the frame of the car and this will go to the front suspension. So I'm gonna punch these out really quick and then I'll show you how to assemble the torsion shock part and then we'll be done. Okay, so this is the uh, iron worker that we have here in the shop. It's a badass machine. If you got a fab shop, you should have one of these. Makes stuff a lot easier. This is a half inch punch though. Um, I'm gonna hook this up and punch a couple holes in here. Typically, um, on the front end of these torsion shocks, a half inch hole will be good. Sometimes it depends on the, the uh, down by the toe here, if you got a bigger heim, and sometimes you might need like a 916. But today we're just gonna punch a half inch hole on each side, and, um, and then we're gonna start assembling these shocks. So let me get this tightened up, punch a few holes real quick. Okay, so to actually complete this as a friction shock, um, I'm not gonna be able to put it on a car today but I have a set already on one that I can show you. Um, but basically what you have here is you have a plate and this is gonna push against this rubber right here. Now this rubber you can get, this right here is actually a um, mud flap. So you can do a mud flap, you can do a conveyor belt. Um, you know, I've used hockey pucks a lot. Um, hockey pucks I've used on a lot of cars. But um, anyway, you put this through here like this goes through the rubber right there and my bolt might be a little long, but that's okay. I'm gonna use it anyway. Um, you're gonna come through here. Now typically on this one right here, and I don't have the tab um, actually on here, but the tab will come down like this and come over like this. And this will be the tab that you actually weld to the frame of your car. This one here is just kind of a mock-up, but basically it goes in here like this. Okay, and then you put this on there, and you put your uh, put your nut on. And what happens here is the more you tighten this, the more pressure you create as a friction point. Okay, right now I've got a bolt in there that's pretty tight, but that's basically what it looks like when it's done. So, as you apply the pressure to this nut, it's going to squeeze these, and it's going to create, you know, friction pressure. Okay. Um, and you can adjust that on your ride. So it's actually adjustable too. Um, I would suggest a locking nut on here. Um, Cause if you do a locking nut, then you can kind of uh, put it where you want it and it'll uh, keep the friction on it. Um, because you, you can loosen these up quite a bit or snug them way down. But anyway, this right here basically is your lady leg setup. Something that I, um, I did years ago. Um, it's super cool. Um, you can cut these out. I've actually cut them out with a plasma cutter, a hand plasma cutter. I mean, they're a little bit more work because you have to do a lot of, you know, grinding and sanding. Um, but if you have a table plasma or you know anybody around that has a water jet or something, you could, um, you could have these burned out really quick. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the completion of that. And I'll take you inside and show you on the copper rod what they look like when they're installed. Okay, so these right here are a completed set of the torsion shocks. Um, as you can see, like on the back side of here, you got this one here. This one right here is actually welded to the frame of the vehicle down here, as you can see. So this is the one that actually holds all the, everything, you know. Um, these right here were actually hockey pucks that I used. I cut a hockey puck in half and just put them in here. 
and then tightened it down and created the friction. Um, you know, the toe actually sits down on the end of the leaf spring right here. And it just, it helps the front end from bouncing and creating uh, uh, steer wobble and all kinds of stuff. So it's kind of an old school um, setup, but they actually still kind of use the same um, design even today um, on some things. But anyway, um, that kind of completes what we're doing here. Um, I wanted to give you guys a rundown on the lady legs, torsion shocks. I don't know if this is really a how to do video, but it's how I do the video. So, you know, take it for what it is. If you guys are wanting to build a set of these for your straight axle little uh, coupe or roadster, um, these are perfect. They look really cool. I mean, they're just badass. I love them. I'm gonna be looking at this a week from when it's posted. Um, I'm gonna look at the comments. I'm interested in what you would put it on, what you would do with them, whether you would use it in your headboard in your bedroom, stick it on your BMX bike, put them on your car, hang them on the refrigerator, I don't know. Whatever you guys' comment is, I wanna hear it. Um, whoever comes up with the coolest comment, I'm gonna put these in the mail and I'm gonna mail them to you. So uh, make sure you get in there and comment on it because I'm gonna ship these out. Thanks for watching.